Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about the subjunctive in French. This is a pretty tricky verb tense. Um, one of the things that generally happens with this is because it's so different than the other verb tenses, we kind of leave it until the end of your high school career. Um, and at that point, um, then all of a sudden you realize, you're like, oh my gosh, this is actually everywhere. I, like, you could use this all the time. Um, so I think the, one of the reasons why we tend not to teach it earlier on is that in English, it's really hard for us to identify um, when we use it and what it is. So let me, let me just actually give you one little example before I even carry on here. So if you guys know the song, uh, Let It Be, this is kind of our, our go-to you know, example as language teachers, the song Let It Be by the Beatles. Normally, you'd have to say like, it is nice or it is raining. You wouldn't say, it be raining. So for us, we know like, yeah, let it be. But how come, like in, as English speakers, if that's the only language you have to, uh, to, to describe when you need it and why you use it and why you're saying let it be and not let it is, well, we know it sounds like let it be, we get that. We know it's not let it is, but we don't always know why. So that's a bit of the problem with the subjunctive is um, unless you have another language to refer to, um, examining your own language, how do you do that when you're within your own language, right? It's very complicated. So um, here's, here's where the subjunctive happens and here's kind of where it's very frustrating for us. Um, in English, we might have a sentence like this, I want you to be happy. Um, and I'm gonna incorrectly, but translate this just so you guys can see what happens. We wanna say like I is je, we have the is da da da. We're gonna have two, we're gonna have um, let's say ah, let's say être, and then content. Okay, this is this is typically what we want to do when we see a sentence. We've got we've got a few things wrong with this. Um, the first the first major major thing wrong with it um, that we can easily fix. So just a line at a time. Um, so think of it like a math equation where every time you you write something, um, whatever you change. So let's say this here is is a problem. Um, I'm going to just change that in the next line. So this literally is to be, but the problem is that the, the verb être on its own literally means to be. So what you're actually saying is to, to be. So I don't actually need the A with the accent, so let's just go like this. We're gonna have être, content, okay? So not great, but still a little bit better. The problem that we see in French is that when, when we see this, is that we don't have the word que. We don't have the word that or which. Um, and in French, we have to have it. We're supposed to have this idea of que in here, and, and in English, we don't need it when we're talking. We can just say, I want you to be happy. And in fact, it would sound weird saying, I want that you to be happy. That, that sounds a little illogical. So the problem is that in English, we have this idea that we want to communicate. And unless we actually know the formula in French, we're going to communicate it wrong. Um, and so as much as this looks right and, and great and dandy in English, there's, there's an expression. Okay. So as much as I'm going to show you in a minute, there's like 200 of these expressions. You're going to have to be like, oh my gosh, this is, this is what can make the subjunctive happen. So. Um, then, so then, let's say we know now it's, it, it, it has to have que because the expression is I want something to take place, not just I want an apple, I want an action to take place. If this is the action that you want somebody to be happy, that's not, that's not an item, that's an action, okay? So the minute we have that, it's, it's then the subjunctive, it goes je veux que, and then we have to conjugate this. And normally we want to use the present tense, and we want to say something like to a, um, but the problem with this is it's the subjunctive, so this would be incorrect. So let me just show you, we've got, we've got a few options before I actually break down the subjunctive. If you want, you actually can avoid using the subjunctive. Um, if you just learn the ones that, the, the verb, um, let's say expressions, the formulas that take the subjunctive, you can then 100% avoid the subjunctive. The problem is that there's certain things that you actually can't say unless you have the subjunctive. So you could speak 100% without ever using the subjunctive, but there's, there's things you would never actually be able to communicate. So um, let's take a look. If I wanted to, so... The minute, the minute I have the word que, that's my trigger, is, is the subjunctive, is, is possibly going to be around. Not always, because there's certain words that, um, let's, here's an example. Um, let's say, um, I don't know, la chaise, uh, I don't know, que tu veux. The chair that you want, because it's a noun and not like an action, it's the chair that you want, I can have que, and it doesn't have to be the subjunctive. So having said that, though, is any, any, any time you see the word que, that's kind of your trigger. Like in grade eight, you don't learn about the subjunctive necessarily. You, you're like, ki, ka, what do I do, blah, blah, blah. But now that maybe you're a little bit older and you're looking at the subjunctive, anytime you see the word ka, that is kind of your big red flag. Like, oh my gosh, this could maybe be the subjunctive. Then you'd go to your list and you'd have to be like, okay, is it on the list? If it's not on the list, it's not the subjunctive. Let me just show you how to actually avoid it some of the time though, just another little trick. The minute you have the word ka, you need the subjunctive. But if you don't have ka, you don't need the subjunctive. 
So in this case, if I'm following the rule, verb plus infinitive, which you guys should look that up. Let me just write this out in case you can't hear me. Verb plus infinitive. <laughs> what this rule states is that whenever you have one verb that is conjugated, the second verb does not have to be conjugated. So let's say I have info, and then I can have my infinitive. So I have the same idea that I'm trying to express here. It's important that I do my homework. So here's my word that it's important that I do my homework. Or basically, one has to do their homework. Il faut faire les devoirs. Similar, like not exactly the same meaning, but I can kind of avoid the whole idea of the subjunctive by using the verb plus infinitive rule. So a little bit of a cheat, but I don't know if, if that kind of helps you. Let's say you're, you're looking at the subjunctive and you're like, this is impossible, I can't do this. Well, then there's little ways to avoid it, but ultimately you, need, you should master this. Okay, so let's look at our subjunctive. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, let me just scroll down a bit because da -da -da -da, I want to get to you. Okay, the subjunctive mood is something that expresses, I'm just going to read this out, that expresses ideas which are a little bit uncertain. So something you want, I mean you want doesn't mean you're going to get it. Like I could say, you know, I want to be rich, doesn't, doesn't mean just because I want it, I'm going to be rich. Um, maybe an emotion, a doubt, a possibility, a necessity, a judgment. Basically, anytime something is not a fact, then you're using the subjunctive. Okay, anytime there's a possibility that it may not happen, that's generally when the subjunctive kicks in, which is very frustrating because you're like, isn't life full of uncertainty? And then every sentence I make now, I'm full of uncertainty. Yes. So really, if you're speaking correctly, the subjunctive kind of should be everywhere. Um, I think the problem is that for us English speakers, when we speak, we don't always speak correctly. And so you don't even know when you're using the subjunctive or not. Um, some verbs sound the same with the subjunctive, some don't. So it's not like something you're, you're very acutely aware of as you're speaking day to day. Um, so here's, here's a few things. So I've made a few little lists that I've kind of plagiarized from other sources. Um, so here are verbs and expressions which expresses someone's will, an order, a need, advice, or a desire. All of these require the subjunctive. So let's say, um, where, what's the last one? To desire that. I can say, I desire, and actually that sounds odd in English, we wouldn't say this. What's it? It's important that, that's a good one. It is important that you finish your homework. Well, that's the subjunctive. Because here I've got my que, or is it important, que. The minute I have my que, I have to be like, ah, look at my list, is it on my list? If I see the subjunctive, or the, this expression on the subjunctive list, and it's like, yeah, now I have to use the subjunctive. And I'll show you later how to actually make the subjunctive. But the first and the hardest part is actually identifying the subjunctive. So um, maybe I could say it's natural that you do your homework, or it is necessary that you do your homework, or it is normal that you do your homework. If I just say do your homework, I don't, I don't need the word could in there, so therefore it's not subjunctive. So these are all, again, somebody's like a desire, a need, a piece of advice. There's still an element of uncertainty that it may or may not happen. Okay? It's like a request. Just because you're requesting doesn't mean it's, it's like, will you marry me? Maybe. Maybe not. Right? <laughs> Just because you ask doesn't mean you're going to get it. So again, all of these here are subjunctive. I've got pages of this stuff. This is horrible. Okay. So um, here's another one, another grouping. It is emotions um, so such as fear, happiness, anger, regret, surprise. So for example, I hate that you do your homework. Or <clears throat> I am happy that you do your homework. Or I'm sorry that you do your homework. I'm surprised that you do your homework. Anything to do with an emotion, because, now let's just pause for a second. Let's just say I'm happy. I'm not saying I'm happy that you do your homework. I'm happy you're doing your homework, because that still implies the word that. Maybe I'm just saying I'm happy, then I would just say, just be content. I don't, I don't need to make it um, subjunctive, because unless I have my que, there's no need for subjunctive. If it's just pure, I'm happy, I will be happy, I was happy, those are just regular normal verb tenses. The minute I have the que, now it becomes subjunctive because now I'm saying I'm happy that you've done your homework. So one of the tricks I would say is that in English, if you can insert the word that, even if you don't normally, if you can insert the word that, do it in French all the time because that's kind of how the French speak. Like if I said the girl I like, that's how we would normally say it in English, but if I can say the girl that I like, that's kind of a little clue. The French are going to want you to use the word que. Okay? So, um, okay, let's carry on. Da -da -da. That last example I gave you, by the way, was not subjunctive. It was just, do I use que, or yes or no? So, um, oh, this is not, okay, let's just go like this then. So, all right, verbs that express a doubt, a possibility, a supposition, a, an opinion. For example, I doubt that you have done your homework. It is fitting that you do your homework. It is false that you do your homework. It is impossible that you do your homework, okay? Anything with a doubt, and again, you can see there's, but it's still doubt, like it's uncertain. Right? Like they're saying, like, it's impossible that you do your homework. Well, 
until you can say, you did not do your homework. Well, that's now a fact. That's yes or no, right or wrong. It's, it's done. But they're like, if it's impossible, well, someone's always like, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> so, um, okay. Again, let it be. So, we have other phrases. So, for example, some of the conjunctive phrases basically mean stuff that combines sentences. Um, also requires the subjunctive. But again, it's not the end of the world. As long as you, you you'll, it's more like exposure. Think of it like that. Because as much as I'm showing you like pages of lists, if you had your list and every day you're like, okay, I'm just going to kind of try and listen for this one. And then the next day you're like, I'm going to try and listen for this one. And over time, you're going to start to hear similar ones kind of popping up. And then you're going to be like, okay, I just, I've heard it enough that I just know it, right? It's like, it's like listening to music. If, if somebody played you a song, you would never heard it before. You've never heard the musician before. You would have no idea who made it. But let's say you're at a party and you hear it once. And then maybe the next time you're like, oh, I think it sounds familiar. I don't know who it is. I can't remember, but I feel like I've heard it. Well, then you hear it again, and you're like, oh, I, that's the Beatles. Well, then maybe, you know, another week goes by, and you hear it again. You're like, oh, I forget the name, but I know it. Oh, it was the Beatles. I remember. I remember. Well, then maybe by the time of the fourth or the fifth time you hear the song, you're like, that's the Beatles. I know it. I don't need to look it up. I don't need to, like, Spotify the song. You're like, I, that's the Beatles song. I know it. It's kind of how it works with this. Once you've seen the sentence enough times, you're eventually just going to be like, oh, I, yeah, I remember it. Does that take the subject of yes or no? Um, do I have this whole list memorized? No, I should, but I don't. <laughs> There's so much stuff on here. But some of the main ones, you're like, yeah, I know that. I've heard that a lot. I guess I'm not around people that are like, until or even though, I don't know, whatever. So, um, however, here's the tricky stuff. There are times that you're going to see uh, where you have the word que and it's not subjunctive. So, um, these do not take conjunction, or do, the conjunctions do not take subjunctive because, in theory, what they're expressing is fact and it's certain. So, before, when it was like, I doubt that you can do this, or I'm happy that you can do this, or silly uncertainty factor, here, it's not necessarily uncertain. It's like, it's like a therefore, right? So we have a since or because or since or when, because, while. All of these things that take the word que in French in, in, in um, where am I, sorry. They don't, sorry, that's why. They don't take this subjunctive because it is a fact. It's 100%, it's going to happen. It's like, you are a feline because you are a cat. If this equals this, it's a fact. It's not like you're a feline maybe because maybe you're a cat. No, like, this equals this. So think of it like cause and consequence. If it's cause and consequence, then it's not then it's just a fact. It's not, it's not an opinion. There's not a probability of it not happening. Okay. Um, these verbs and expressions do not take the subjunctive when they're used in the affirmative, um, but when they're in the negative, they take the subjunctive. I can't even tell you why this is. I think French people were doing a little bit of, a little bit of drinking when they were making this stuff going on. Um, in the affirmative, so when you say when it's positive, no subjunctive. But the minute it's negative, then it does take the subjunctive, which there's no logic. Like, why? Why? Who knows? Um, I mean, there must be logic. Maybe the, the logic is that if it's negative, then there is an element of doubt or uncertainty. I don't know. It's just for us, as English speakers, this is very frustrating. It's just exposure. Like, I don't know if you could actually sit down and memorize this whole thing, because that would be, well, maybe you could. Not fun. OK. How do you actually conjugate the subjunctive? The nice thing with how to actually conjugate it is, is the hardest part is not the conjugating. The hardest part is being like, do I use it, yes or no? That's the biggest challenge. At least here, it's, it's somewhat predictable-ish, simple-ish kind of conjugation. So let me walk you through this. So, um, all regular ER, IR, and RE verbs, and many irregular verbs, um, is what you do. This is what you do. So you put it in the present tense, you conjugate in the present tense, and you go all the way down, you know, have like je, tu, il, el, nouveau, blah, blah. You go all the way down to the il, the plural, il, masculine form. You take off the ENT, and then you add on these endings, okay? So say, for example, in MA, you'd have the plural, um, the masculine plural would be ils aiment, so A-I-M-E-N-T, we drop off the E-N-T, and then our stem is A-I-M. Hopefully, oh, let me just read the next ones. With finial, you conjugate it like, so they finish, you'd finis. Okay, we drop off the E-N-T, and then you're left with F-I-N-I-S-S. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and then these are the endings you add on. Je, you add on E, which is kind of nice, because it's like a present tense E-R verb. With um, two, you add on E-S, E. Here now we're adding on I-O-N-S, I-E-Z. You might have seen that before in the Amparfait and the Conditional. It's kind of similar, so it's like, it's like French was like, let's borrow here. Oh, and over here. Oh, let's go back over here. It's crazy. And then back to ENT, which is a regular um, ER verb ending. Anyways, so in theory, think of it like regular ER verb endings, except for new and vu, which takes I, O, and S, and I, E, Z. French is silly. I love it, but it's silly. OK, um, let me just show you some brief exceptions. You, you do have to memorize the exceptions because they're, they're a little bit wonky. They don't follow pattern. Let me go to the more common ones. Where is, okay, so for example, avoir un être. So maybe somebody could say, like, it's important that I have, I don't know, a dog. It's important que j'ai un chien. So it doesn't look like, like, 
I mean, it sounds like J, like normal present tense that I have, but because it's A-I-E, we know mm, imperf or, um, imperf subjunctive. Um, or I could say it's important that you be on time. Actually, that's kind of a nice one, because with être, you can actually hear the difference. I wouldn't say it's important that you, you are, a, oh, let's see, is, no, shoot, that's hard. Il est important que tu sois à l'heure. So, yeah, shoot. I was hoping French just got a little easier there, but it didn't. French is very complicated. Um, so, again, these are your exceptions. There's really no way around learning this other than maybe just memorizing the exceptions and then just exposure to which ones take subjunctive, yes or no. So, hopefully that makes sense. Let me just kind of try and recap here. Um, the subjunctive typically, not typically, one, let me back up. 100% of the time, the subjunctive you're going to use after the word que. Okay? But just because you use que doesn't mean you use subjunctive. But the subjunctive you can only use if you see the word que. So if you don't have the word que in your sentence, you don't really have to worry. Now you could be wrong because maybe you're writing the sentence and there should be a que and you don't have it. So just because you don't have it doesn't mean that it's not supposed to be there. But your big number one is you're going to look for the word que. Your num number, number two, you're going to try and go over the list and be like, okay, here are some, some expressions that I use a lot. Not me, as me, but you. Um, and, and say, okay, I use this expression a lot. Uh, I'm going to just remember that these are the ones that take subjunctive, maybe, I don't know, 10. Make that your goal. Make 10. Then you're going to try and remember how to actually conjugate it. Um, and then there we go. That's our, that's our subjunctive. Remember, it's expressing like a, anything that's uncertain. So maybe a doubt, a wish, a hope, a dream, um, an improbability. Those are all things that are not necessarily going to happen. The minute it's a fact, it's something that's been done, or it's a cause and consequence, then it's no longer subjunctive because it's explaining something that 100% um, is, is inevitable. So there we are. I hope that helps. Thank you.